Hello, I'm going to show you how to set up your work from home station properly. Now let's go to the screen first. Top of the screen should align it with your eyes. Okay, ideally, if you have extra screen, even better. Now, you want to be having about an arm length from the screen. And from here, if you cannot see the screen properly, make sure you either change the font or get some new glasses. Okay, that's important because a lot of folks end up doing this, that put a lot of pressure for the neck. So it doesn't matter what the next, I mean, what the screen setup. Now, second thing that has everything to do with your screen is your keyboard. Now, for those who can have an extra screen or uh, that would be even better, but if you don't, um, I would definitely suggest just spend some money to get an extra keyboard so that even when you're standing or sitting, you can have a proper setup, you know, so you don't have the screen compromise. Now, on the keyboard setup, I always tell my uh, patients to try to keep it low. So the angle of the elbow and the wrist should be more than 90 degrees. So I would say 120 degrees. And you want the wrist to point down other than cocking up, okay? So by doing this, you're putting a lot of pressure onto the nerve and on the carpal tunnel. So you want to point your wrist down this way. That's why I always suggest uh, an extra keyboard and type on the left, that's perfect. Now, same thing for the mouse. Um, I personally like you know, this uh, Logitech mouse because we can go on any surface. So if, say if I have to work any surface, I can just simply put it you know, on a, another cushion or whatnot. I can use the mouse this way while keeping my shoulders and my wrist in a good alignment. Now, if you have a chair, have an armrest, trying to have the armrest high enough, just uh, high enough to just give your shoulder a little break so you, lift, you can lift your elbow. You can feel your elbow being lifted a little bit, okay? So that's gonna be the perfect setup for you in terms of sitting, okay? So we talk about the screen, we talk about the keyboard and the mouse. Now let's talk about the chair. If you find yourself sitting on a sofa or a bed, um, those are the two things I really tell patients to avoid because when you're sitting on, you know, on your bed, in your bed or a long couch, you end up really rounding your back while putting your leg out. And for my patient, you, have a, you may have noticed, this is a slump test. So by sitting in this position, you're constantly putting pressure onto your disc and putting that pressure onto the sciatic nerve as well. So you don't really want that, okay? The rule of thumb here, your butt higher than your knees, okay? This way, you can prevent you from slouching. And the other part is, you're gonna to wanna to roll a, a towel or something like that, to put it just behind your tailbone so that you cannot run your back, okay? And from here, you wanna make sure uh, between the chair and your knee, you have some space there, okay? The worst case scenario we saw uh, from patients was their chair uh, deep and low and they are a little high at that edge so they end up like sitting like a bucket seat. And the worst place is they even have a little uh, wedge on the chair that push on their leg. And those are the folks who usually uh, report like feeling some numbness and tingling after sitting for a while. So don't do that. A quick note for those patients who actually have a problem bending backward, you know who you are, okay? Now for, then for those cases, okay, that's the one, uh, those are the ones you want to actually sit a little bit slouch. Now not too slouch, but you want, those are the ones you want to keep your butt align with your knees or slightly higher so they don't really jam in your back, okay? So if uh, watching this and not my patients, then uh, comment below so I can show you the self-test. But for my patients, you know the self-test, bending forward, bending back, you know if flexion, meaning touching the toes, hurts you then, definitely sit with an arch. But bending backward hurts you then, then you're the type who wants to have the butt lower or align it with your knees. Okay, quick tips. Now, quick note on uh, sitting on a ball. Um, sitting on a ball, I mean, I'm sitting on a ball myself, you know, I like it, uh, but a lot of folks actually butcher the ball by sitting like this. And if you remember, I mentioned sitting like this for a long time, that actually really puts some pressure onto your disc. So 
don't do that. We're trying to get the middle of the ball. Okay. Now, you may try. You have tried to stand doing uh, working as well, which is great. Um, but you may find yourself slouching like this. So a good counter for standing that way is simply doing a sp split stance. Okay. So by doing so, it's really hard for you to slouch back, and even doing this is hard to slouch. Okay, or lean in one way. So split stance. And uh, the other, uh, one of my other favorite is basically on one knee. So when you type, just type on one knee, you can switch. So you get the idea. The key uh, from working from home is trying to keep a variety of, of posture because at the end of the day, uh, most of us don't have the best setup, you know, like we have in the office. And even though you have that, if you hear me long enough, trying to keep moving. Okay, so every 20 minutes, uh, set up a timer. Every 20 minutes, get up, change your position. That goes a long way to counter X any posture, any setup. So, hope you find this helpful. And if you have any other questions on how to uh, set, this, set up your work from home station properly, just comment below or email us. All right, until next time.